Welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's story is from a brand new author by the name of Luke Reason. And I just know you guys are going to sink your teeth into this one. Of course as ever though, please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. Why it really does help build the channel and our community further. We want our hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story. Entitled Werewolves of Terror Veil. Vale. Let's get straight into that. Chapter 1 The Curse. Hi, my name is Romulus. I'm a former farmer turned former soldier turned former captain of the human capital city of the north. And this, well, this is my story. I was born on a farm just outside of Arboville, the smallest village in all of Garamond. I was the 250th person born in the village. My family were very poor, but we made do with the pittance of the wage we received each year from selling crops. I was happy where we lived, but like all young men, I wanted to experience the splendour that was Arbor Haven. With its beautiful white walls, magnificent towers and houses, it was a dream that would soon become ashes and dust. I lived my life working on my family's farm until the day came when all young men of Garamond are expected to make their own way in life. And so, at the age of 18, until the age of 20, I lived as a grafter, taking whatever jobs I could find, until eventually enlisting in the Arbor Haven Grand Army. Now the king would send out small patrols near Terra Vale, the dark city and sister to Arbor Haven, to ensure that no power-hungry orcs ever tried to rise up and begin a new war. And like the first war which devastated the lands of Garamond, many good men, elves and dwarves died to stop the terrible darkness, or so I was told by my late grandfather. Now we began hearing rumours about wild dogs prowling the empty streets of Terra Vale, but that wasn't a concern for us at the time until a surviving soldier from another patrol came sprinting towards us, waving his hands at us and begging us not to go near the city, saying that the wild dogs were infecting the troops and turning them into massive beasts. Probably some sort of necromantic power left behind by the first Dark Lord a thousand years ago. Our commanding officer decided to recall us back to Arbor Haven. However, curiosity got the better of some of our platoon. We never saw them again after that. Well, not in a human form at least. And just as we were out of sight of the abandoned city, we heard a sound like a wolf, but it sounded almost human. It howled in the dark very close to us, and then we heard another one and another. And before we could ask any questions about what we had just heard, a commanding officer confronted us, saying that we were not to speak a word about this to anyone but the king. We disobeyed the order, of course, deciding amongst ourselves that the people of Arbor Haven deserved to know of the new possible threat that was a merchant. Now, three months after our horrific subsequent loss of men, word began to spread amongst the populace of dogs, dogs of almost seven feet in length and weigh more than a rhino. Working in a pack to terrorize the people of Arbor Haven, devouring children, tearing apart the women and decimating the troops. Probably our former allies and members of our own platoon that vanished when we were recalled back to the city. And after a week of defending the villagers from the werewolf curse, we decided to find out how to break the curse. My commander gave me 30 men and a promotion to captain. We were tasked with searching through the deserted dark city for any way of stopping this terrible plague. We reached the gates three days after being assigned the task and entered the abandoned city. I was completely void of life and movement as far as we were aware, but that's well, that was our first mistake. The horrors that we faced in a supposedly abandoned city when I was but a captain of Arbor Haven was worse than anyone could possibly imagine. Immediately after entering Terra Vale, we were set upon by a pack of terror hounds. I watched in horror as many of my allies and friends were dragged into dark corners or ruined buildings and then savagely bitten and clawed. And just as the last bit of life was about to leave them, they began to transform no longer looking human, but instead a monster with teeth the size of daggers, claws as tough as steel, and fur as dark 
as the night sky. None of us was safe. I was surrounded with nowhere to go, and so I knelt down and bowed my head, expecting them to kill me at any moment or savage me to an inch of my life. But instead, they grabbed me and dragged me to the spire of Terra Vale, so that I would be interrogated by their dark master. I screamed out in horror when I reached the top of the tower and laid eyes upon the creature that was before me. For it was not a man nor a beast that ruled the terror hounds and werewolves, but a night stalker. A being that is neither alive nor dead, but bound to the mortal world, invisible to the naked eye, except for a set of sharp, pointed, razor-like teeth under a black cloak. It just hovered there above the ground before me, laughing at me in a screeching pitch, before saying, You shall be my right hand and my loyal servant. Take him to a cell of my pets and prepare him for his transformation. I was dragged into a dungeon cell by terror hounds. I then had my hands bound together and my feet bound together with chains by my former men. Only now they were werewolves. I was shivering with fear, wondering what they would do and what my fate would be, when suddenly one of the terror hounds came prowling towards the cage. Then... It slipped through the bars and began to maul me. I managed to free my hands from the chains that bound them. And I found a knife that was left in the cell for the opportunity of suicide. Obviously some sort of sick joke for the night stalker. I stabbed the beast, but not before being infected with the werewolf curse. And I began feeling a stretching sensation, coupled with a ripping sensation. Then all of my important internal organs began to stop working at the same time but only for a moment as they were all simultaneously expanding. The pain was unbearable. A heart attack, kidney failure, lung failure, and liver failure all at the same time. But that's when it wasn't even the worst of it. My muscles had to rip and reform. My bones had to break and then extend and fuse back together to support the seven-foot beast. And it was then that I realized that I was transforming into a werewolf. Then one day I was released from my cell and I joined a hunting party sent by a night stalker master to thin out the army and people of Arbor Haven, enough for a full-scale invasion and conquest. The more people we bit, the more our numbers would grow. An unstoppable wave of sickness and darkness that cannot be stopped unless the night stalker was slain. However, none of us could kill him, for we were bound to serve him till our death freezes, or time takes our body and we rot in the ground. It has been a month since I last transformed. I am 80 years old now. Recounting my encounter with terror hounds and the last 60 years of my life. If you can call becoming a beast a life. I am the alpha wolf of terror vale now. Just like our master always wanted. I have searched and searched this wretched place. But I have found no signs of anything that can break this terrible curse. And yet I have found one thing that allows me some sense of normality. A tomb of power created by the former Dark Lord. It allows me to keep my identity when I transform. Slowly, we grow in power, waiting for the day when we can conquer this world. Chapter 2 Destruction of Arbor Haven Let's get straight into that. And a war raged on for ten years between us and the humans. Neither side could get a firm foothold until one of my brightest soldiers, most trusted ally, came up with an idea that would turn the tide of this war in our favour. The city of Arbor Haven had a side gate for evacuating civilians to the mountains. We knew it was not very well guarded. The humans assumed that any assault to the city would come from the main gates. And so, I dispatched thirty werewolves to take the side gates, and with the goal of sneaking to the main gates, taking out the guards at the gatehouse and opening the gates... The plan would have gone off without a hitch. However, the Princess of the Elves decided to visit the King of Arbor Haven during the week of our siege. The problem was that the Elves insisted that they enchant the side gates, for they, like us, had discovered the obvious flaw with the city's defensive designs. What the Elves, nor indeed the humans, realized was that a small, long-forgotten tunnel led from Arbor Haven to the plains of Garamond. Originally, it was used for smuggling contraband into the city. However, now it lies abandoned, 
which was perfect for our plan. I decided to implement my plan again. Only this time my infiltration squad would utilize the tunnel and emerge deeper in the city. Meanwhile, myself and the rest of the troops lined up with trebuchets behind us, manned by orcs. I gave the order to fire, and the attack commenced. The people of Arbahaven screamed in terror as rocks coated in oil and set a light hurtle towards the city. Suddenly, the werewolf infiltration squad emerged from a building deep within the city and began biting and infecting the citizens. Within the next couple of hours, 30 werewolves became 1,000 within Arbor Haven. Meanwhile, myself and the remaining 220 outside the city waited patiently for our outer gates to be breached. And finally, the strike force opened the gates and the city defenders began to retreat to the second level. On the following night, we feasted on the corpses of our fallen foes. The remaining soldiers watched from the battlements in horror as many of their fallen comrades and family members were torn apart and devoured by werewolves. The night went by slowly for the humans as we prowled around the city's lower level, trying to find a way into the upper level. And normally, we would just climb the walls. However, the humans had poured boiling oil down the walls and set fire to it. And after hours of lingering around the lower level of the city, we were forced to hide inside many houses of the city, for if we stayed out when the sun began to rise, we would transform into our human forms and become vulnerable to mortal wounds. I watched from the shelter of a building as at least 700 werewolves were caught out by the rising sun and began to turn back into their human forms. Immediately after, they were shut down by archers of Arbor Haven. The we few werewolves that survived remained inside the buildings and only ventured out at night. We spent months in our human forms. Although still powerfully strong, we did not try to attack the city's remaining inner levels for fear of being wiped out, for it was another three months until the next full moon. Instead, I sent one of my fastest messengers to the task of asking a Night Stalker for reinforcements. Three days went by without a word of help for us, until the third day of our ranks. After the third day, our ranks were pretty much obliterated, with only myself, my runner, and one other, as well as a couple of hundred of orcs left in the city. My race was almost completely spent, and suddenly, looming out of the darkness, a necro knight astride a fell beast appeared from seemingly nowhere, with a massive army of orcs, trolls, and ogres to aid us in our conquest. The necro knight ordered his fell beast to fly into the gates of the second level, smashing them into pieces. We let the orcs, trolls, and ogres attack first, as our own troops were in need of a brief rest. The humans put up a good fight, but alas, not good enough. We pushed forward until we came upon the royal palace. We found that the doors were enchanted like the side gates and that the Romanian citizens were barricaded inside with the elven princess and human king and their royal guards and Romanian human troops. We knew that only a true powerful being could break through this enchantment. I yelled up to the necro knight who was flying above us. We need your power to breach these doors. It ordered its fell beast to land in the town square. The necro knight dismounted and approached the doors with its blade aloft and began to strike the doors, all the while chanting in a strange strangled language that I had never heard before, the ancient language of darkness. Suddenly the doors of the royal palace exploded, and the rest of my army ran in, and we were quickly dispatched before I could call out stop. I yelled out for the elite orcs to move forward and attack, for they wore heavy armor and had more experience dealing with the archers. After that, the trolls were sent in to keep the enemies occupied, so they had no time to think nor plan their next move. And finally, we entered. Myself and my Romanian werewolves, we went straight for the king and captured him, putting him in chains and taking him to Terror Vale. We brought the human king to the Night Stalker, whilst the rest of the army pillaged, plundered and burned the city to the ground. And master questioned the king about weaknesses of the other human kingdoms before finally extending his arms and converting the king into another necro knight. It was cruel, really. Rather than just killing him, a master made the king into an immortal servant. A master snapped his fingers, and the king went off to join the army like an obedient dog. Meanwhile, myself and my remaining followers were told to go and get some rest. 
for tomorrow, we had a very important mission. They required a small group like us. We awoke early the next morning to see the army that was dispatched to our aid had returned to Terra Vale as conquerors and victors, boasting of their success to us as if we weren't even there, as if we had not just lost almost all of our kind to a siege that was doomed to fail from the moment we werewolves had begun attacking and had to be bailed out by lesser creatures. We marched past the hordes of dark creatures, taking no notice to the endless chanting and cheering that seemed to follow us. And finally, we reached the Great Tower, where our Lord the Night Stalker resides. As soon as we entered, we felt a change in the air around us. Something was wrong. Tentatively, I stepped forward, addressing our master. My lord, are you okay, my lord? Our master spoke with a cold malice in his voice. Silence, you fool. You failed in your mission. You lost my army of werewolves through reckless tactics and sheer stupidity. And now you dare come here before me as victors like the hordes of rabble within these walls. You failed to heed the commands of your lord and master. I said move into the city and kill all but the king, but you didn't. The elves survived and most likely are sending word to the rest of our enemies to tighten their defenses. Without the element of surprise, how do you expect to dominate our enemies and this world? I decided to speak again, foolishly, and potentially test our master's patience. My lord, with all due respect, who brought you to king? It was not my failure that the elves escaped. Orcs and trolls had entered the throne room of the king before us, and had begun attacking. We assumed that the elf princess and her guards had been killed during the breach. My master began to lose his temper with us. The fact remains that regardless of whose fault you think it was, I had to bail you out, and our enemies know of my existence now. We cannot use the elements of surprise anymore. And so here is what I want you to do. Go to the elven kingdom of Starin, disguised as a human refugee, and use that realm as a recruiting ground. Rebuild your ranks, and then conquer the remaining elven nations. I bowed to my master and made to depart, when suddenly he called out to me, Silver tongue, do not fail me again, or I will have your head as a trophy. Chapter 3 The Realm Eternal Let's get straight into that. Each of us took a potion to suppress that werewolf form before we departed the city the next day. We arrived at a border to the woodland realm three days later and decided to set up camp outside. We had been traveling for days without rest and were pretty tired, and we were just starting to drop off to sleep when suddenly we were grabbed from behind, then had our hands tied behind our backs and we were forced to walk at a brisk pace into the woods, where finally, after hours of marching, we reached a large wooden city surrounded by wooden walls, and on those walls were arches, at least fifty of them. We passed through the gates and up a flight of wooden steps to a massive tree, with a widened set of steps leading up to a giant treehouse above. We reached the topmost step and stumbled forwards as our captors shoved us and forced us to our knees before their king and queen. The queen of the woodland realm was fair and beautiful to look upon, and yet power emanated with every word she spoke, whereas the king was a quiet reserved being who rarely spoke at all, and when he did, it was only ever to his wife. And the queen began to speak, addressing the captain of the guards. Well, captain, what news do you bring before my throne? The captain responded, Your majesty, I caught these four men camping outside our realm. They claimed that they were just passing through on their way to the Black Mountains of Dorwinian. Suddenly, the queen turned to me and said, And before I ask you what you're doing here, I wish to learn your names. And I stepped forwards, and speaking very loudly and very clearly, said, I am Captain Morgrim, leader of the 4th Division of Arbor Haven, or I was until the darkness consumed my beautiful city. Now my comrades and I are all that remains of the noble guard of the White City. 
The strongest and biggest among us is Wolfric. The skinny chap with a long beard is Malganus. And finally, the fourth member of our company, lanky and hunched over, he is Remus. And as for why we are here, why, we are simple refugees of the ruined city of Arbor Haven, seeking asylum from the wilderness. Suddenly, the king stood up and began to speak, addressing us. You're not werewolves, are you? Word has reached me from my daughter that there's been werewolves attacking human settlements. My daughter also informed me that apparently there were no survivors from that siege in Arbor Haven. So if you are not werewolves, and you are clearly lying about being refugees, then who are you, and what are your intentions for being in my realm? Suddenly, a guard shoved me forward and said, You will tell the truth or we will execute you. At that precise moment, the effects of the potion that was suppressing our werewolf forms started to wear off. Not only that, but the moon started to bathe the woodland city in pale light that shone through the treehouse palace, hitting us and causing us to transform. At that exact moment, the king and the queen of the wood elves started yelling orders to the guards, telling them to kill us before we could infect any of the citizens or themselves. We began our rampage through the city by killing the queen and king of the elves and infecting the princess who had taken up arms against us. The entire elven nation was converted. Then I instructed one of my companions, Wolfric, to stay behind and act as governor of the elven lichens. Malganus, Remus and I, along with the princess, departed an hour after the official appointment of Wolfric as governor. We packed up some supplies, mounted some horses, and set off for Terra Vale to deliver our report on the smoothness of our mission, and our captive, the princess, to our master. Once more the darkness struck, and once more the light was snuffed out. The poor elves had zero chance once the first of the infected began to transform. The city guard scrambled to regain some sense of control in the chaos that followed. However, too many people had become infected by the time they had rallied their strength. It was a bloodbath, as a good 40% of the elven people were killed and eaten, and a further 20% were captured and enslaved by a group of orc slavers who happened to be operating in the area. As for the remaining 40%, they became a new subspecies of werewolf. When the orcs appeared in the midst of the battle, we knew they were not servants of the Night Stalker, but a wild tribe for they had not been branded with a sign of the dark eye with teeth, but rather they bore a different mark, a black-skinned dog, brute, whipping a human man. And the return journey was difficult, as the wild orc tribe insisted on accompanying us back to Terra Vale to meet our dark master, and no amount of discouragement could change their minds. Not only did we have to deal with their vile company, but also the princess refused to walk with us, and insisted on being mounted on horseback. However, we werewolves had no need for horses, and could easily travel many leagues in a very short period of time. And, in our beast form, we can even outrun a cheetah. Finally, after five days we arrived at the city gates, only to find them hanging off their hinges, and not a single orc guard at his post. I was in shock, as our master had the gift of foresight, that went way beyond the simple assumption of the future. We searched within Terra Vale for any sign of what might have caused such a void in a usually busy, noisy, and bustling city of darkness. Eventually, I found an orc captain, barely alive, in the rubble, who, once healed, told us the situation. Wow, 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 wow. Certainly another one. Wow. What a chest pounding, absolutely riveting fantasy adventure and horror there by the incredible mind of a brand new author to the show, Mr. Luke Reason. A mighty thank you to you, Luke, for your patience and incredible talent, and of course, choosing the channel to bring this talent to all the wonderful folks at home. I hope you enjoyed this rendition and eagerly wait with bated breath for any updates in the future. Well, guys and girls as ever, 
you know the drill. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. Well, it really does help grow the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. Now, if you think you can pen the next big hit or just want to have a swing of things like myself, then please do get in touch with me at the contact email, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. Cannot thank you all so, so much for your incredible patience, your dedication and support to this channel, and keep your things ticking over so well whilst I've had so much upheaval. Lots of changes have happened over the last couple of months, and many more are due to come. But slowly and surely, we are getting in a better position to get back to a regular schedule. Bigger and better, and far more ferocious than ever. As ever guys and girls, much love and respect. I hope you, your family and friends are well, and you're enjoying this beautiful weather. But above all, remember, be safe, not sorry. Will the real DMT please stand up? I repeat, will the real DMT please stand up? Uh, we're going to have a problem here. I bowed my... I bowed my... My, 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 Thank you, my leech. It's actually a woo-woo. Woo-woo. Exactly. Not only that, but the wound with the wound 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 blue wound doom boom boom boom. I saw you standing alone. After infecting many of the guards and the princess, we began to infect the rest of the elven populace until <coughs> now, if you think you can pen the next big hit, or just want to have a swing of things like myself, swing. Tense drama, action, action. You always make background noises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bop, bop. Like, like Rad, like it's a, it's a, like if it's a very tense moment. Yeah. I like make little, I like moment and add the, add the pressure and make make the surroundings more visualised better in their head by making noises. Yeah. It's banging. Oh yeah, that's banging that. That's that's banging that, isn't it? Mm, you haven't had? Hmm? You haven't had? That's... Uh.